This is David Osteen, pastor of Hope Bible Church in Locust Grove, Georgia. And I want to deal with a question I received by way of a comment on one of my videos. And uh, the person is asking about how do you respond to someone who says that the God of the Old Testament is not the same as the God of the New Testament, that there's such a difference uh, in the Old Testament. God had at times ordered Israel to kill uh, not only men, but women and children. And uh, there's a lot of uh, judgment and wrath. Yet in the New Testament, you know, God is love. And, and this is a common thing you come across where people pretend that the Bible contradicts itself and that the God of the Old Testament is not the same as the God of the New Testament. How do you respond to that? Well, you have to understand when you're when you're dealing with somebody who says things like that, you're dealing with somebody who's biblically ignorant, and uh, they obviously don't even know basic things about the Word of God, and so you can't give them too much. Uh, but just some basic things. Let me give you some ideas. Uh, you know, obviously there's one God that reveals Himself throughout the Scriptures. The Scripture is God revealing Himself to man. We only know God. Uh, by his word. Now we can look at creation and know that God is real and that he's powerful, but to know who he is, we've got to go to the word of God. That's God's revelation to man. And the Bible reveals one God, but he's one God who exists co-equally, co-eternally in three persons. And there are three members of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's easy to prove in the scripture that they are distinct and yet they are one. Uh, in, in Genesis 1, for an example, God said, let us make man in our image, plural. Uh, there's a plurality of persons in the Godhead. I'll probably do a video on this issue of the Trinity in the near future. People attack that and they say the word Trinity is not in the Bible. But the doctrine that the word signifies is, and it's easy to see that in the Word of God if you just believe the Bible. And so, uh, but when you're... In the Old Testament, you see a, an appearance of God. Uh, I believe that is uh, Christ. There are many pre-incarnate appearances, and uh, Christ did not begin in Bethlehem. Uh, he took on flesh, but that he took on flesh presupposes that he existed before that. And, of course, uh, he is eternal. He is everlasting. In Micah 5, verse 2, where it talks about how Christ would be born in Bethlehem, it says his goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. And uh, so, but, you know, the Bible says that uh, Christ is the, is the uh, image of the invisible God. And, uh, you know, the Father, uh, you cannot see him. The Spirit, you cannot see him, but you can see uh, the Son of God. In uh, Daniel 3, the three Hebrews in the fiery furnace, Nebuchadnezzar said there's a fourth and the form of the fourth is likened to the Son of God. And uh, I realized that he took on flesh, uh, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and yet before that there were appearances. Uh, the term angel can signify an appearance, and uh, Christ is the angel of the Lord in many passages in the Old Testament. Acts chapter 7 Verse 30, and when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. So God is appearing to Moses. He speaks to Moses. It, it said the angel of the Lord. Well, this is this angel of the Lord. What does he say? It says, when Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Uh, then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. And so that's the Lord Jesus Christ, an angel of the Lord in appearance. And you can, and I'm not going to run all the references, but you see that many times. For example, Joshua 5, when uh, Joshua uh, saw the captain of the, of the Lord's host. He saw Christ there with the sword drawn in his hand, and uh, that that was an appearance of the Lord to him. And uh, it's it's clear to see that he, that he saw 
uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Um, that's John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. And down in verse number 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So again, <clears throat> the Word of God, uh, you, you see how he makes these appearances throughout the Old Testament. It's the same God. That's, that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. God never changes in his person as far as his moral principles and, and, and who he is, but he does change in his dealings with man. And, uh, you know, and it's consistent throughout the Scripture as far as the attributes of God, the character of God, uh, and his moral principles. It's consistent throughout the Scripture, but there's obviously a difference between law and grace. That doesn't mean it's two different gods. Uh, a God of the law in the Old Testament and a God of grace in the New Testament. It's the same God, and God, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You see examples of God's grace in the Old Testament. Uh, but this is the grace age, and God is showing grace like never before. Paul called it the exceed, exceeding abundant grace in 1 Timothy 1. And grace is reigning uh, through righteousness by Jesus Christ, Romans 5. Um, but, you know, in the Old Testament, when you had Israel as a nation, and God uh, gave them a land, uh, they were a nation. They had a military. They had to uh, execute enemies. Um, there's a difference between a nation and the church, the body of Christ. Uh, the body of Christ today is not going to go forth like an army uh, with the sword. Uh, we go forth with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. But God used Israel to kick the wicked Canaanites out of the land, and God has a right to give the land to whomever he chooses. He gave it to the seed of Abraham, and there were peoples that God instructed Israel to execute and to just wipe them out. And, you know, this is kind of a deep study to get into. I'm just going to mention it to you, but... God revealed that the seed of the woman would bruise the serpent's head, Genesis 3.15. Satan began to attack that seed line. And, um, you know, that's what you have in Genesis 6 with the sons of God uh, taking the daughters of men. Giants were produced in the earth. And I believe that the sons of God in Genesis 6 are fallen angels that cohabitate with the daughters of men. And I think I might have some teaching on that on this YouTube channel. I'm not sure. I can't remember off the top of my head. If I don't, I'll probably make a video on that sometime. But at any rate, that was Satan's attack on the seed line, which, you know, God brought in a flood. It was so widespread. Noah was pure in his generations. So God started over with Noah. Uh, that um, mingling there, Satan trying to corrupt and attack the seed line, um, but Noah being pure in his generations. Well, there was giants in the earth in those days and also after that. Well, as God gave more revelation and prophecy got more narrow and it was going to come through Abraham and through his seed that the Messiah would come and God gave them that land, then the attack was focused in on that land and not the whole world. And so there were giants in the land. And Satan used those giants to strike fear in the heart of the Israelites, and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. But God eventually did have Israel. Go, uh, they believe God did bring them into the land. And I'm not, uh, for time, there's so much to talk about here, but I'm taking for granted you understand the history of that. Uh, after they wandered 40 years, then Joshua led them into the land, and God used them to... Uh, get rid of some of the, and these were wicked people that were in the land and so whenever you had groups that were even the women and children had to be killed I think it's because of that corrupt seed line there and the and the, the giants and the, the things that were so you know God is just and you know what all lost sinners who die in their sins they're gonna suffer eternal conscious torment in hell and ultimately the lake of fire so you know, it's the same God, Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, but Israel was a nation. They had a military. And 
that explains differences. The body of Christ is not a nation. We don't have a land. And uh, again, we're not under the law. We're under grace. God doesn't change in his person, but he does change in his, his dealings with man. In Revelation 19, the Lord Jesus Christ comes back on a white horse, second coming, and he is going to bring, it, it says in 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 righteousness, he doth judge and make war, and he's going to slaughter his enemies. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so there's a consistency. It's the same God, and the there's not there's not a. It's ridiculous to say that there's a different God in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and um, you know you have to understand the ages. You have to understand how God is working. Uh, he does not change in who he is, but he does change according to progressive revelation and how he deals with man. But you got to pay attention to the context of what you're reading. You know, there's much more I could say, but uh, I'll, I'll finish up with this. In John 8, verse 58, Jesus said, Before Abraham was, I am. And that's where we started in Acts 7, uh, the burning bush. Remember, God told Moses when Moses asked his name, I am that I am. Jesus Christ said before Abraham was, I am. Okay, the same God, uh, Old Testament, New Testament. One God in three persons, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, these three are one. Okay, 1 John 5, 7. So if you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment, send me an email, hopebiblechurchga at att.net. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.